podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime cap tip on all things Liverpool FC and your daily reminder that the Reds remain top of the league. Well, folks, uh, there is news in the Liverpool sphere today, not Liverpool related, but Liverpool adjacent. Uh, Former club captain, Jordan Henderson, who left the club in the summer to go and do something new and exciting, to go and make a change in Saudi Arabia, has binned it all off after six months. Uh, he is going to be released from his contract with Al Etifak because nobody was willing to give them any money for him and he wasn't willing to stay there because, you know, why would you honour your contracts? And he's going to go to Ajax because nobody in England wanted him. A uh, one, one and a half year deal. Seemingly he wanted two and a half years. Ajax have offered one and a half years and he's taken it because it's his only choice. If I had to guess, I would guess his wife and family have played a big part in this, that maybe they wanted to be closer to the UK, that they didn't settle in Saudi, Bahrain, wherever. That would be my guess, because they can now move back to the UK and he can play in the Netherlands and he can still come home and see them on days off and stuff. So I would guess that's the big driving factor here. But it's funnier to just say he flopped in Saudi Arabia and he's been released from his contract after six months. This is funnier to say. Um, He'll go to Ajax. The Eredivisie is fairly crap. And Ajax at the moment are probably the worst they've been in... I don't know, certainly 40 years. Maybe the post Cruyff, pre Van Hal 80s, they would have been worse. But yeah, Ajax are desperate. So they need experienced players. They're hoping that he can come in and be the difference. Uh, no chance of them winning the. Eri Divisi this season, the aim will be more that they can get themselves back on a level footing and maybe try and win it next season. Um, it is just funny, though, that after all the the PR and the bullshit around the move to Saudi, that six months in, he's bidding it all for whatever reason. And look, if it is family, it's fair enough. But, I mean, they could have moved back and he could have stayed there if he really wanted to honour the contract and honour Stephen Gerrard, who went out of his way to bring him there. But, you know, we've seen that loyalty isn't really his his bag. Um, what Joe Cole really said about wishing he'd never signed for Liverpool, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what he really said. The truth of it is that we're all wishing that he hadn't signed in one way or another. Um, now Cole has admitted he wouldn't have joined Liverpool if he could choose again however there was a good reason for why that is hard to criticise him on the Obi-Wan podcast which is John Obi Mikel's podcast is a brilliant name uh, if I could have my time again I would probably go you know what wait and I would have gone abroad somewhere hot I had a choice between Liverpool or Spurs because Arsenal pulled out and I just couldn't go to Spurs. I just couldn't go. It would have made sense. Harry Redknapp was the manager. They had a good team. I lived in London. 
but half my pals are Spurs fans. I couldn't do it. Okay. My daughter was just born. Liverpool is a great club. It just didn't work out for me there. Uh, yada, yada. I mean, yeah, I know he had knee injuries, but he had knee injuries before we signed him. So we signed him knowing that. Um, it would have been better for everybody if Joe Cole had never signed for Liverpool. Like, let's be fair. It just would have been. Um, David Lynch has a new piece up where he has confirmed that Crescencio Somerville and Michael Elise are players that we are interested in, but he says there's obviously no guarantee that we follow up on that interest. Uh, Michael Elise is the, the better of the two, quite clearly, but Crescencio Somerville is a really talented player, playing very well for Leeds in the championship. Um, I don't know what kind of fee they would want for him, but he has been he has been linked with moves away from Leeds for the last couple of years. Like he's never really seemed to be fully settled there. Um hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of him. Like he looks a talent for sure. But I don't know how he would adapt to playing at the level we operate at. It's one thing playing for Leeds in the Premier League, where he was pretty good. He's been great in the Championship, but it's a completely different thing doing it for a club like Liverpool. Olise, on the other hand, he does seem like he could very easily step into our team and immediately look at home. He's just an exceptionally gifted player. 18 Liverpool players, 18 players who left Liverpool last summer and what happened next? Let's have a, a gander at this. Uh, so Henderson, we know what's happened there. Milner has been poor for Brighton. Ox is playing in a dreadful Besiktas team. But <clears throat> he, by all accounts, has been quite good. Naby went to Werder Bremen, has been routinely injured. Uh, he's played just 81 minutes so far, which obviously isn't great. Bobby went to Saudi Arabia and apparently he is also looking to leave. Um, though it seems with him, it's more that the team have kind of given up on him. Um, Fabinho obviously went to Saudi as well. He's been playing quite well. Still looks so slow over there, though. Uh, Arthur is playing brilliantly for Fiorentina. He's been really, really good. Uh, Leighton Clarkson, Leighton Stewart, Max Waltman. Elijah Gift and Kieran Samuels all found new homes. Clarkson's obviously been at Aberdeen where he was last season on loan and he's been very, very good for them. Stewart is coming off the bench at times for Preston. Hasn't really found a a role there. Uh, Waltman hasn't played at all for Oxford. Um... Elijah Gift is in the academy at Athletic Club de Bilbao, so we'll see what happens there. And Kieran Samuels joined Brentford. He's playing in their academy. Uh, released youngsters. Jack Byrne was released. He's gone to Granick Morton. Liam Hughes mentioned him the other day. He's gone to FC Hacke in Finland. Charlie Hayes Green is at Bolton. Oladare Olafunwa is up playing for St. Johnston alongside another ex-Red and Tony Gallagher, who we signed many years ago, and he just never quite never quite reached the level we had hoped. Fidel O'Rourke has not signed anywhere yet, which I'm really surprised at, because I think Fidel O'Rourke's quite a talented player. And Ewan Roberts is playing for Ballotown in the Welsh League. So I think... Leighton Clarkson is probably the only one that will look at his move and be actually happy. Oh, Fabinho, maybe. But all the rest of them have, have had a struggle. It does raise the question of why we kept some of them as long as we did. If they're struggling at these other clubs, why was why were they at Liverpool for so long? You know. Um, right, Andy Wales <clears throat> has asked me to... Look at this, right. Uh, If you could change one of these Champions League finals that Liverpool lost, which one would it be and why? Choices are 07, 2018 and 2022. 
I'd get rid of 2018 straight away because I, I don't think we were – we weren't the better team in that game. We were the better team in 07. We were the better team in 22. Um, Which one would I change? Probably 22 on the basis of we also missed out on the league by a point and losing out on the league by a point and then losing a Champions League final was absolutely a horrible week. <clears throat> and it kind of put a taint on what was a very successful season, winning two domestic cups, getting to the you know the final game with a chance of winning the league title, getting to the European Cup final, but not winning the league and then losing that European Cup final was very, very tough to take. So I'd probably say that one. But there is a strong case for 07 because in 07, I mean, Milan, they still had the star names, but a lot of them had started to decline. They weren't as good as they had been in 05. I suppose it was sort of, it balanced out that the better team lost in 05 and the better team lost again in 07. Us and Milan both ended up at one European Cup, even though it probably should have been the other ones that each won. Like they should have won in 05, we should have won in 07. You look at their team for that final. Dida had declined. Otto was at right back. They'd had Cafu in that position a few years earlier. Uh, so definitely a step down. Nesta had had the back issue and wasn't quite the same. Maldini was 38, 39 at that point, and he'd moved to centre-back. He was obviously still great, but he wasn't as good a centre-back as Yap Stam. And they had uh, Jankulowski at left-back, who wasn't as good as wasn't as good as Maldini at left back. Gattuso had declined. Pirlo was still great. Seedorf was declining. Ambrosini had come into the midfield, which got reshuffled because Kaka had moved into attack. So the midfield was worse overall as well. And then you had Kaka and Inzaghi up front. Kaka was still, he was great. He was the best player in the world at this point. But Inzaghi wasn't as good as either Shevchenko, Shevchenko or... Crespo, that team's just not as good as what they'd had in 05. You look at our team, uh, Reyna was better than Dudek. Finnan was Finnan. I think Carragher was better at this point. Agar had stepped in for Sami. I think that's a better push. Risa was playing left back instead of Jimmy Traore, so that's a win. Alonso had probably been better in 05, but was more mature. Mascherano was a huge upgrade um, on what we'd had in midfield. Now, I know Haman came on and was brilliant, but I'm talking about the starters in 05. Gerrard had played central midfield to begin that game, and in a double pivot, Mask is just much better than Gerrard. Gerrard was then able to play as the 10, where he's clearly much better than Harry Kuehl. Um Zenden left side instead of Risa. It's about a push as a left winger. Pennant right side instead of Schmitzer. I would rather have Vladi Schmitzer. Uh, Dirk rather than Barros, a better push. And then we had a stronger bench than we'd had in Istanbul as well, whereas they had a weaker bench. So, yeah, we had a better team than we'd had two years previously. They had a worse team, and yet somehow... They managed to win the game. Um, we really should have won that game. We just seemed to get caught up in our own heads or something. Um, very, very disappointing. So I would say that one was was definitely one we, we should have won. But because we'd won in 05, in 05, I don't mind as much. I know we won in 19, but it was against a different team. We lost to Real in 18. And again, they were the be- they were a better team than us. In that, in that, at that point, but we were better than them in 2022. We just were. We were better than them in 2022, and we should have beaten them. And again, like I said the other day, nothing will ever convince me that if Jurgen doesn't start Naby 
Fabinho and Thiago that we don't win that final. Um, if you could change one of these FA Cups that Liverpool lost, which one would it be and why? So, 1977 FA Cup final. Liverpool play Manchester United and United beat us 2-1. Uh, Pearson, Stuart Pearson put them one up. Jimmy Case equalised two minutes later. And James Blienhoff uh, put them back ahead two minutes after that. Um, we had a much better team than they did. Much, much better team than they did at that point. 1988, obviously the final to Wimbledon. And 1996 is United again, the Cantona goal. That secured a double for them. I'd like to take that double off them. But I I would say probably 1988 is the one I'd go back to if I could and change. Because that that's probably the second biggest upset ever in an FA Cup final. I think Wigan beating City has has trumped that. But then maybe not. Maybe not. Laurie Sanchez with the only goal of the game. Like, look at their team. Dave Besson in goal. He was a good keeper. Um, Clive Goodyear at right back. Eric Young, Welsh international at centre back. Andy Thorne, he was decent, to be fair. Terry Phelan was a good left back. Laurie Sanchez and Vinnie fucking Jones in midfield. Um, Alan Cork and Dennis Wise in the wide positions, both good players. Terry Gibson and that weird bell end John Fashionu up front. Uh, John Scales obviously would go on to play for us, very good defender. And uh, Laurie Cunningham coming off the bench. Laurie Cunningham was a very, very good player. Very, very good player. Real Madrid signed him in 79 from West Brom, where he had been really, really good. Him, Cyril Regis and Brendan Batson, um, the three degrees, you need to look them up. And uh, they're, they changed the game in English football for the better. Uh, broke down a lot of walls. But he went on to Real Madrid and had a good career, played for... Sporting Gijón played for Marseille, came back to England, played for Leicester, then went back to Spain and played for Rayo Vallecano, played for Charleroi in Belgium. Then he joined Wimbledon, was only there for a couple of months, but was part of this FA Cup squad. But he's a really good player, was more the point. Like that's it's, it's not a bad team, but we were the league title winners. We won the double the following year. We'd won the double in 86. We should have had three doubles in... Four, four seasons. We didn't win the league in 89. Arsenal won the league in 89. We won it in 86. We should have won it this year. We should have won it the following year. We won the FA Cup the following year. Arsenal beat us to the league title. Um, I'd probably take that one. United were flat out better than us in, in 96. And frankly, them lads turning up in them suits, we deserve to lose. But in 77, United were not particularly good. Like United were not a good team in the, 19, the late 1970s. We won the European Cup four days after this game. This would actually, this would have been the treble. So yeah, let's take this one. Let's let's leave Wimbledon with their flowers because there's so much to like about the Wimbledon story and obviously not how it ended, but how they got to where they got to. Yeah, we'll leave Wimbledon. We'll change the 77 final.
They'd lost the final the previous year. Southampton beat them 1-0. We were just a better team. Like, look at the names in that team. Ray Clements, Phil Neal, Tommy Smith, Ray Kennedy, Emlyn Hughes, Kevin Keegan, Jimmy Case, Steve Highway, Terry McDermott, all in that team. Ian Callaghan coming off the bench. Joey Jones playing left back. Not first choice, but a good player. David Johnston starting up front. A good player. Obviously, Tosh would have been the guy, but we should have we should have won that game. We were just flat out a lot better than them at that point. We were the best team in Europe at that point. We won the European Cup four days later. Uh, we were the best team in England. We should have won the league. Um, he did then ask League Cup twenty sixteen against. City, under Jürgen, obviously. Again, they were the better team. They just were a better team at that point. 2005 against Mourinho's Chelsea, obviously Rafa's first year. Again, they were just a better team than us. But 1987 against Arsenal. This might be the one. This might just be the one to change. We went 1-0 up, 3 in rush. Charlie Nicholas scored. Grobelard, Gillespie, Venison, Spackman. Whelan, Hansen, Walsh, Johnson. It's not a vintage 11 on the day, but it's a good team. Like, it is a good team. You've got Kenny and John Wark coming off the bench. Jan Mulby and Steve McMahon starting in midfield for us. It's not like it is a good team. They had some great players, but that we were better than them. We were just a better team. Like John Lukic, good goalkeeper, not great. Viv Anderson, Kenny Sampson as the two fullbacks is outstanding. And David O'Leary and Tony Adams together was brilliant. But like Steve Williams, decent, not not special. Paul Davis is a good player. Martin Hayes is okay. Rocky Road Castle was incredible. And then you've got Niall Quinn, a young Niall Quinn and fairly average Niall Quinn. And Charlie Nicholas, who, I mean, Champagne Charlie, he'd been great for Celtic. He never, never quite managed to do it for Arsenal. That's easily the highlight of his Arsenal career. He was brought in. They thought they were signing someone who was going to get them 25 goals a season. Um, his best was 18 out of 50, in 53 games, which isn't bad. But considering in his last season at Celtic, and remember, this is back 82-83, Celtic aren't even the dominant force in Scotland. You've got Ferguson's Aberdeen. You've got Rangers and Dundee. Dundee United, one of the Dundee teams, was really good at that point as well. So it's not like Celtic had a cakewalk every year and he scored 48 goals in 53 games. Like, he was a goal machine brought in with the expectation of 25 plus a season across all competitions. He never came close. His best league season was 11 in 41 in the first year. When he left, he went back to Scotland Oh, excuse me, to play for Aberdeen. Um, now, to hear him talk when he's on Sky, or when he, I don't know if he still is, he used to be anyway, <clears throat> you'd think he was scoring 50 a season, but no, not quite. Um, yeah, we should just beat that. They had a great back four. They had one great midfielder and one good midfielder, and the rest of what they had in midfield and attack was average. Now, look, there's a couple of Liverpool players there that weren't great, but they were still good players, and we should have won that game. So I'll take that one. Um, 87 against Arsenal. I just don't think... I, I don't think we went into those games against against Mourinho's Chelsea, who were just rolling through the league, and against um, 
against City. I don't think we went into those games seen as favourites or even a close run thing. So European Cup final will take 2022. FA Cup, 77. And League Cup will take 87. Uh, On AnfieldIndex.com, there is a piece with me saying Mo Salah was a far better Premier League player than Cristiano. And he was, and he is, and I stand by it. It's a piece about Curtis Jones, a piece about Henderson, a piece about Thiago, and a piece about Dave Davis saying that Liverpool don't see no transfers as a big negative. That is very much the view of the coaching staff, to be fair. Um, Podcast-wise, there is the Media Matters with Dave Lynch. There is the Scouts of Tommies, the New Minefield. There's a transfer show with Trev and Dave. There's a Scouted to come today, and there's a few other bits and bobs coming this week, and obviously we'll ramp up towards Bournemouth. There will be a rivalry con and such before the weekend. Uh, That is it, folks. That's all for today. See you tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.